Go. Hey, everybody. This is Zeminon joining you here for the Lonely Draft League's off-season Wi-Fi Draft League championship matchup. And we have Lazy Ghost and the Phoenix Sun Flores facing off against DJ and the Birmingham Jolts. So uh, these are two, two players that have been playing in the LDL for a long time, going back many generations at this point. Uh, and this is this is kind of like the the pretty competitive league that we had during the off seasons between season ten, which Lazy Ghost was the winner of, and what we're going to have this upcoming fall with the uh, season eleven of the LDL. So this is uh, uh, our first attempt in the LDL at playing our draft league on cart in the game. So that's the video that we're going to be watching today is from Lazy Ghost's perspective. So uh, if we want to get the the video rolling to see what these two trainers decided to bring today in their in their matchup uh just so everybody knows lazy go finished five and one in the regular season with a first place spot and dj was four and two in fifth place so uh two of the top players in the off season definitely so lazy ghost has the uh <laughs> is it's it all it's like mono electric essentially <laughs> on his on his team uh, the lantern Vikavolt, zero aura toxicity pink urchin and the drake is old so if we look at uh the stats his biggest his biggest uh kd is on drake is old this season who is one of lazy's dynamaxers it's a 10 and 2 kd and then on dj's end having all dark types, which I assume that Sil Valley is uh, Sil Valley Dark in Tyranitar, Hydreigon, um, uh, Grim Snarl, Sil Valley, Incineroar, and Weavile. So, so nothing necessarily standing out right away as to what's going to be the more effective mono type in this in this matchup. I'm sure. I'm sure I can I can understand why Lazy Ghost was doing so well in the the regular season <laughs> in this off season league as being mono electric really rewards you since a, if you just don't face a, a mono ground team, you you don't really have too many weaknesses that you have to worry about though. Uh, DJ being a lot more, uh, a lot more hit and miss with that dark typing. You have some, you have some great offensive advantages against say ghost types or, Psychic types, but then you're also very weak to fighting types and fairies. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely sure we're going to see some fighting type move coverage on, on Lazy Ghost End. But let's get into the turn one here as it is Tyranitar versus Pinkurchin. Pinkurchin, uh, most likely after we see the Sandstream, is going to be setting up the electric terrain here to boost the attack. And there, there it is with that electric surge's ability, going to be boosting the damage of all electric type attacks from grounded Pokemon. So I, that's not going to affect Vikavolt, but I believe uh, most of the other members on his team will be affected by it. Uh, Earthquake though, from Tyranitar will be super effective into Pinkurchin. Not enough for a one hit knockout though. Maybe it was Focus Sash anyway, so it might not matter. Uh, and a Toxic Spikes from the Pinkurchin on Lazy Ghost. And so as I'm, I have their, uh, teams on the side here looking at what potential options he has to defog i believe so valley gets defog uh, unless i'm going crazy yes it does shifter gets it hydreigon has has a uh, has defog so hydreigon and so valley are really what are are what dj has to get rid of these these toxic spikes but if he didn't bring those this week, these Texas Bikes can stay up. Earthquake from Tyranitar will be able to knock out the Pinkurchin, though. So this was a this was like a sack Pinkurchin lead. This was definitely like get Toxic Spikes up and, and be a little annoying and hope some of the other things on on DJ's team can you can try to whittle them down a little bit with the Toxic and get them into range for Drake Result and for Zara Aura. And we are going to see a Zara Aura right away. Um, so this is something that DJ has to predict here. Does Zara Aura have a fighting type move? Obviously, we can see from from Lazy's perspective that he does have the fighting type with a really cool setup of bulk up and drain punch. But this is information that DJ doesn't have yet. So, do you expect him to have a fighting type move coverage? Do you expect you know if you switch out? What if Lazy Ghost has Volt Switch? Right? 
Uh, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of mind games here this early. But bulk up from Zero Aura. Tyranitar decides to stay in and will boost his defense though. So this earthquake is not going to be doing as much. It still does pretty much fifty percent to to the Zero Aura. Going to have a little bit of the recoil or uh, residual damage from the Sandstream, but that will be negated by the leftover reveal. So this is um, that's pretty big reveal from from lazy there to know that or for dj to know that this is probably a bulky zero aura and now that he has the bulk up boost to its attack and its defense this drain punch should be doing uh should be doing a lot of damage and obviously since dj is a dark type with this mono or dark type team that he has uh doesn't really think any of the pokemon on dj's and want to take a drain punch so that will be a clean one hit knockout for the zero aura here and that's going to be a huge recovery all the way up back to full hp essentially you see 193 out of 195 uh the sandstorm and leftovers are going to counteract each other uh so it is now a five to five battle uh as we look at their as we look at their captains that they have available to them because i always want to know when we see uh, the the trainers what their Z move captains or excuse me Z moves <laughs> I'm in the wrong generation what their Dynamax captains are uh, Lazy has a Lolan Raichu and Draco Zolt and DJ has Hydreigon and Bisharp um, so I think Lazy really wants to preserve an end game where Draco Zolt can come in later and Dynamax for three turns and and declare three knockouts essentially with the Dynamax boost um, but what does what does this Grimmsnarl have up his sleeve? Does he have some type of annoying uh, uh, annoying status condition or or prankster move that he can set onto the Zara Aura, or is this more offensive? And it's it's going to be a reflect out of the Grimmsnarl, so that's gonna that's gonna negate half the damage from physical attacks, so like that play rough there. Uh, still super effective and lowering Grimmsnarl's attack. Something interesting. Lazy Lazy Ghost's fourth move is substitute. So on that turn, if he went for a substitute, that would have been a, a really a really nice reveal. Uh, and it's, I, I really don't see anything stopping him this turn from opting for substitute because this Grim Snarl just had its attack lowered again. So is Grim Snarl going to waste a turn going for a light screen, even though there's a physical attacker on the field? Uh, is Grim Grim Snarl really can't go for an attack either since he just essentially he's minus one um but lazy ghost not opting for substitute instead wants the guaranteed uh knockout at the end of the turn with the player off and that's huge that grim snarl survived because stomping tantrum will do some super effective damage but because of the previous turns attack drop it's not nearly as much as dj would have hoped for uh and the grim snarl will be knocked out so chalk up a chalk up a KO for Pink Urchin from the grave there. That's a, a nice little passive knockout with thanks to the toxic spikes that he would not have been able to do if it wasn't for sitting those up on turn one. Uh, so now it's five to four. Lazy Ghost seems to really be in a in the in the driver's seat right now because he has two knockouts thanks to this Zero Aura's strength. He has a bulk up set up. He's very close to full HP has the potential to substitute. I still am curious as to why he didn't substitute the previous, the previous turn there, because it didn't, you know, look like that would, that Simon Tantrum did too much to it. Uh, but in comes Tiger King himself, which is Incineroar, who I have a lot more experience with in Incineroar and in, in doubles and singles, but I have used Incineroar in draft leagues before. And I think that Intimidate is really crucial on Incineroar, and that's why Zara Aura will switch out here into the Lantern. So wanting Lantern to get hit by this Darkest Lariat. Um, not not sure how the rules necessarily go with draft leagues for this season because Incineroar used to have knockoff in Gen 7. It currently does not have access to knockoff. That's why we saw Darkest Lariat there. Uh, so not doing as much as he could have to the Lantern if he had knockoff, but not not currently an option for the Incineroar. Earthquake, another great coverage move on Incineroar. Brings Lantern down into the red, but not enough for a knockout. But it is enough to activate the uh, the pinch barrier there, so that will recover up around 33% of its of its HP, thanks to the Globberry. And a rest from, 
from Lantern. So that's going to actually become fully healthy. There is there is no there's no lumberry, there's no chesto berry. So this is going to stay asleep right now. You wonder what Incineroar's answer is to this. So we see the we see the sleep talk there, which definitely makes sense because he has a good chance at hitting hitting some nice moves like play rough. Uh, but parting shot will lower its attack and special attack. I don't really see what other options Incineroar had in that situation because Darkest Lariat was just not doing enough damage to it. Uh, and you don't know what coverage, especially if the Lantern had a water move. You don't want Incineroar to take that. Uh, but Silvalli will come in now, and it is Silvalli Dark, obviously. Uh, so you you would have a, a, a Dark-type multi-attack hitting the Lantern there. Sleep Talk will show off Rest, which is really bad for Lazy Ghost, but that's a great turn for DJ because now he's not going to take any extra damage on that switch in. And the next couple of turns are, are pretty safe, obviously, for, for Lazy Ghost. He's just going to click Sleep Talk and, and see what the game gives him, really. Uh, Defog, though, is shown off on DJ's end. That totally makes sense. Obviously, something on your team has to have Defog you know, in an important matchup like this, like the finals in the offseason. Uh, and that's two rests in a row from the Lancer, so really not the most opti- <laughs> optimal turns you could get from Sleep Talk on, on these last two turns of, of being asleep. Grass Pledge, though, from Silvalli is super effective into into the lantern but not enough not even bringing it down to half of its health and charge being connecting onto sil valley doesn't do a lot of damage but it does get a special attack increase so uh, that that was thanks to the parting shot from incineroar that's why it did so little damage now it's back up to full or back up to regular health or regular special attack excuse me uh, but it can just rest off all of this damage it just took the last two turns and you can keep trying to go for hopefully uh, raising a special attack while it is asleep. Uh, that grass pudge was not enough to knock it out, and now it's like those two turns never happened. And this is really, as Reflect wears off, which doesn't really matter too much right now because the charge beam. This is Lazy Ghost bread and butter in a in a point where he can whittle his opponent down and frustrate them. And at the end of every interaction, you think you have a chance, but his Pokemon are just back up to full health and. All of the effort you put into getting them low doesn't matter. This is why he's one of the best draft league players that, uh, frankly, I've ever really seen or or, or <laughs> had the privilege of having conversations with um, because he's just he's just ahead of the game. It seems at this point he is not sweating at all. You have you have DJ. Two of his four main Pokemon are at half health in Incineroar and Sil Valley. His but Lazy Ghost five Pokemon are just are sitting clean, not worried about a thing. Uh, the Vikavolt switch-in was nice there, uh, but it was still it was smart of DJ to expect they switch potentially or kind of like a, a neutral turn um, by bringing the Vikavolt in on that turn and then going for Parting Shot. So double Parting Shot is a really nice, really nice team-building synergy to have on DJ's end because he's constantly having a lot of pressure and lowering or uh, switching pressure, excuse me, switching priority and being able to switch them out and having the right Pokemon he wants in. Now, does he call the switch? No, he did not. DJ not expecting Vikavolt to switch in. Uh, a little surprising, honestly. I think it would have, you know, I don't know how many people would leave a Vikavolt in against an Incineroar that seems to be trained offensively. So uh, a nice defensive pivot from Lazy Ghost there. And now we're back in the same position we were a couple turns ago. What's this Incineroar going to do? Is he going to... Is he going to go for a Dark as Larry? Is he going to parting shot to lower a special attack? He knows the Lantern is asleep, so he does have to... Uh, he knows Lazy Ghost is not fully in control of the move he's going to use. Uh, instead, we will have an Earthquake, though, from Incineroar, bringing the Lantern down to around 30% of its HP. It is fast asleep. And the, the Sleep Talk, what move does it decide to use? This is huge because if Rest fails... Uh, he's going to get knocked out next turn. A charge beam will be the choice, and it does not do too much to Incineroar, but it does get the special attack increase. So this Incineroar now being poisoned is really low. It's essentially, uh, it was at the same health as Lantern, but because of the pinch berry, uh, perfect timing for the poison tick to for it to eat its Agua Berry and go back up to uh, over 50% HP. This is a big turn for DJ because... This Incineroar is taking more and more damage every single turn thanks to the, revigil- the 
Uh, excuse me, it's just regular toxic. I'm crazy. He's taking the same amount. Don't listen to that part. <laughs> uh, so he's he's still taking residual damage from toxic. And does he decide to switch? The answer is no. And the Vikavolt, the the offensive switch in, in into a fire type for Vikavolt to who is immune to uh, the earthquake. There, that is just that's classic lazy ghost. Just how how commanding of a position he's in. He knows that in case, even if he makes the wrong play here, he's still able to um, to be strong enough that he can recover from it. Where DJ really has to sweat every turn to see is he making the right decision. Now, here's another flame charge again into the water type, so that's ineffective. Uh, it's going to raise his speed again, so it, it's a very fast tiger, very fast cat on DJ's end, uh, but eventually it's going to get knocked out from the. Uh, from all of this poison, it has no other way of recovering since it already ate its its berry. Darkest Lariat now is like the safe play from Incineroar because he knows he doesn't have to protect Earthquake in case Vikavolt switches in again. So Darkest Lariat will finally take down the Lantern, uh, which is which is nice for DJ because it was causing such problems. But now you put yourself in a spot where what do you what do you do here because. <clears throat> now something on, on Lazy Ghost and excuse me uh, is going to switch in for free and that is the Dracozole, a shiny Dracozole that looking cool. Obviously a Dynamax is going to come out this turn. One, so that it can take less damage from the Earthquake because you have 200% HP and two, because you don't want to miss your moves because of Hustle. Uh, Max Airstream seems to be the, the choice out of, out of Lazy Ghost. At, see, and that's definitely the most op- or optimal approach to this turn because the incineroar has plus two speeds so uh you you want to eventually get faster than it and then max airstream is definitely it's definitely strong enough to knock it out at this point so whatever switches in on dj side is gonna prob or most likely be at a a speed deficit because of it so earthquake actually doing pretty strong strong damage to the drake result considering it is not a stab attack and max airstream will take down the Incineroar and give Drake's ult the speed. And this is what I was talking about at the beginning of this matchup. Once Pinkerton got those toxic spikes down, Lazy Ghost's approach was get things whittled down enough on DJ's end so that I can get I can claim three KOs with Drake's ult and be as effective as possible in those three turns of Dynamax. Uh, and that's really the spot he put in or he put himself in because what does DJ do? How does he retaliate to a, a Dynamax? Drake is old. He has he has his own Hydreigon, but if Hyd- if Hydreigon is not choice scarfed, then it's not going to be faster to to hit the Drake is old. He DJ decides to bring in Weavile. Uh, Weavile does have obviously Ice Punch or Ice Shard or Ice Go Crash, so some super effective things. Plus one is still not faster than the Weavile. On the on the Drake assault, but it's not enough for a knockout. And then the max knuckle from Weavile or onto Weavile will take it down. That is a huge turn for Lazy Ghost because now not only does he have the speed boost to be faster than DJ's team, he has the plus one attack so that whatever switches in here is not going to be able to endure any type of hit at all. Uh, he's down to I believe his last two Pokemon, so it's a four to two matchup right here and. I don't know how DJ can respond to this situation. It's Hydreigon and uh, and Silvalli at this point. So Silvalli could it could just be using it to to, to sacrifice it. I think um, I don't ha- I I wonder. I don't I don't really know what he can do in this spot. It seems like Lazy Ghost probably has it wrapped up at this point. Honestly. Uh, I think this is, yeah, this Max Knuckle is going to take it. This is going to knock out the Savali and the exact game plan we talked right at the beginning at Team Preview, a whittle everything down with Pink Urchin and Zara Aura so that Drake Azul can, can finish the match off is what is going to propel Drake Azul and Lazy Ghost to victory here in the Lonely Draft League's offseason or uh, Wi-Fi offseason league. Uh, so there is just one last chance out of this Hydreigon. It is DJ's Dynamax Pokemon, so he knows that it's not necessarily in threat of being knocked out in one turn. There is no Dragon move on Dracozole to hit the to hit the Hydreigon with a super effective hit, but it does have 
<coughs> excuse me. It does have a fighting hit. I I think with the plus with the plus two speed, the Drake's ult will be faster though than Hydreigon. So Hydreigon is not going to end this turn off scot free. It will Dynamax, of course. This is this is DJ's last stand. His Dynamax Hydreigon. He has three turns to try to pull this game back. That Hydreigon has such great coverage. Oh, low kick does not work on on Dynamax Pokemon. It's actually a, a, a really weird mechanic. Um, that is, it's very difficult if you're not uh, ready for it. But uh, low kick for some reason does not affect Dynamax Pokemon because they're like they're bigger than they are intended to be in their kind of in that form. So it's like a it's kind of like a future proofing mechanic that that Game Freak put in, which is unfortunate for the Drake Zolt, but it did more than enough. It got three knockouts there, and now it is three Pokemon versus one. It's the Hydreigon versus the world, Toxtricity. Vikavolt and Zara Aura. Uh, maybe this Hydreigon, maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe it's able actually to to get a sweep, uh, a, a reverse sweep on here. Uh, does it have potential coverage to one hit this Vikavolt? You know, we'll, we'll have to find out. A Max Flare does have the fire coverage for us, so this is super effective into the Vikavolt, and that takes it down. It's now two to one right now. Uh, between Lazy Ghost and, <laughs> and DJ, uh, it's just going to get closer and closer. This is the power of Dynamax, how uh, this Life Orb Hydreigon with the speed boost is able to to do so well uh, and and bring back, you know, from the from the from the from the breach, from the from the pretty, pretty darn near close to defeat has the potential to win this uh toxicity though will switch in and there's max quake coverage obviously because he's facing a mono electric team so this is four times super effective into the toxicity so this hydragon has retaliated with three knockouts of its own when that's what lazy ghost did with its drake assault. so it's literally one-to-one -one right now zero aura versus hydragon you can't possibly get any closer than this the unfortunate thing for zero aura is he has Drain Punch and not close combat. And look how the battle is getting low. We are under 60 seconds remaining in this battle. So what happens here? He has the player up. There's a 10% chance that this game is over if Zero Aura misses. Earth Power into the Zero Aura. That's a one-hit knockout. And Hydreigon has done the impossible. That is a 4-0 reverse sweep. And DJ and the Birmingham Jolts are the LDL off-season Wi-Fi Draft League champions. That is crazy. Congratulations to DJ. I'm so sorry that I kind of counted it. I counted it over before it really was. I thought the Drake Zolt had done enough to, to win the game for Lazy Ghost, but perfect, absolutely perfect team, team building out of that Hydreigon or ch a choice of four moves for the Hydreigon from DJ and his front office because... He really needed every one of those, and you you wonder what could have happened, what could have went differently for Lazy Ghost in that matchup to try to win it. Uh, but congratulations to DJ and the Birmingham Jolts. I hope you can take that momentum from winning this offseason Wi-Fi league. And now that you know you're the person who won our first the LDL's first Wi-Fi league, you can take that momentum and bring it to the LDL season 11 and continue on a on a dominant run. Uh, so thank you to everybody who watched this match. Congratulations to DJ and Lazy for putting on a, a really exciting finals match uh, here. Uh, and for anybody who is interested in joining the Lonely Draft League, we have multiple leagues going on. We have multiple formats, multiple draft leagues, a lot of a lot of very talented people. Uh, so make sure to uh, to to sign up. Potentially, we have our Discord that's in the description of this video. Uh, we have signups going on currently right now. They close in around a week and a half. Uh, so we will have the draft going on in sometime in August and then probably towards the end of August or in September, most likely. So starting in the fall, we're going to be having uh, we're going to be starting season 11 of the of the LDL. And we have three different three different divisions. So it, really, there's a lot going on in the LDL. Uh, so if you are interested, make sure to subscribe to the channel and join us in Discord and, and talk to us and congratulate these two on their match. So that's going to do it for now. This is uh, Zeminon signing off, and we'll see you in Season 11.